Hello and welcome to a game called Swordbreaker, a very graphically impressive game. The, the game looks very nice, but that's mainly because it's comprised of stills, which actually doesn't bother me in the slightest. The game is very reminiscent of um, Choose Your Own Adventure books, if you've ever had the misfortune of like having fun with one of those. Um, you make choices, um, you make the wrong choices and then you suddenly die because, I don't know, rocks fall and everyone dies. So up here, as we can see here, we have the, up here on the left, we have the well the, the navigational buttons on the bottom left we have the sigil m which lets us go to the menu on the right we have the sigil t which allows us to view the entire image and as i said the the images the stills are very nice they're very pleasing of course that kind of it's it's not mechanically an impressive game it's possibly not even an interesting game, or impressive rather, but uh, I liked it, so... Anyway, on the bottom we have the story. So, our character is called Swordbreaker, due to the fact that he uses a Swordbreaker. And he is currently on his way to explore this haunted or some or to the point, a castle. So after a long and tiring journey, the hero approached a huge ancient castle. From the look of it, the castle had been abandoned many centuries ago, but something gave him a mysterious feeling he wasn't alone. The adventurer saw an open window on the second floor. Which way to go? Walk through the gates or climb in through the window. So now we get to choose one for the door, two for the window. I'm going to go with two for the window. It took the hero a lot of effort to climb up to the second floor in his armour. Now he was in a guard room just above the castle gates. It looked like there had been a fight here. Dead warriors, or rather their skeletons, were scattered on the floor. Suddenly, one of the skeletons moved and tried to stand up, raising his longsword. Make a choice now. Should the adventurer take a running kick at him while the warrior is still on the floor, or jump out of the window and wait? Oh, sorry, jump out of the window, or, third option, wait until the skeleton gets up and just duke it out like a dude. And again, here's the full image. Um, as I said, it, it does look very pretty. However, the, the one thing I will say about the game, and I, I do apologise in advance, here's your headphone warning. Actually, no, we'll we'll wait on that. There's just there's a very peculiar kind of design choice to the game. So we're gonna kick the skeleton because that seems awesome and I do go by the rule of cool in these situations. The hero didn't wait for the enemy to get up and took a running kick at the frail skeleton. The bones crunched and smashed into smithereens and his sword fell on the floor. Um should the adventurer take the sword or walk to the door? Hmm. Again, here is the whole image, and on the bottom is the sword in question. I am going to take the sword. So, now we can actually... Let's enable the sounds. And this part of the soundtrack is actually very nice. Also, here you can, you can see on the pause menu the progress, the lives, and your alignment. So, we've got two swords, we can continue into the next room, and what happens? What happens is that you are assaulted by the very, actually very nice, but very loud combat music, and which actually accompanies any kind of action event. 
So again, here we have the whole image, and it, it's very nice. It it's very um, Dungeon and Dragons or you know similar games, and I do I, I personally do like the graphical style. I think it's it's actually very good for a game such as this. There were broken beds, chairs, and other pieces of furniture scattered around the barracks when he saw four skeleton guards with their swords at the ready. What should he do? So we can either throw the skeleton sword at them and finish them um, off with the sword breaker's own sword, or we could fight with two swords. We're going to go with the rule of cool. The hero decided to fight with both swords. At the right moment, the adventurer made his way between the two guards and cut them in half before they could do anything. Flawless victory. So here we see the two being cut in half. So now we've arrived at the armory, which is a big chamber with weapon racks and armor stands along the walls. Apart for apart for the bows, swords and shields put in order, the armory was a sorry sight, with huge holes in the floor. Then the adventurer saw two doors, one at the far end of the room, one on the right. Should the hero open the door on the right, the one on the other end, or get, go and take a look at the weapons? I'm actually going to check the racks, I, I, I want to see, and that went terribly for us. The hero was so absorbed in, absorbed in the weapons, he didn't hear the floorboards creaking under his weight, and before he knew it, the floor collapsed. Oh, very nice. The adventurer woke up in a pile of hay, with his hands smeared in someone's poop. What a stench. Ayo. This place badly needs a cleaning. Somewhere in the corner, there was a vicious boar looking for something in a bowl full of blood and bones. Ah, uh, probably a snack. What do you mean something? I can see a foot. I can see a head. I can see a... A mystery thing. Okay. Moving on swiftly. So, do we escape or kill the pig? We're gonna run. So we... um, The hero climbs down the ladder into the kind of sewer thing. And find himself, finds himself at the bottom of the sewers, full of rats, bones, and dirty pools, and weird glowy mushrooms. On the wall, he noticed, yep, yeah, glowy mushrooms. So, should we go down the tunnel, each, I assume that means eat, yes, indeed, eat a mushroom, or rummage in the pile of bones? Uh, we are. Yeah, let's eat a mushroom. Um, now, should we eat the cap or the stem? I'm going to go with the stem. Oh dear. Um, we have died, unfortunately. So, um, like I said, very reminiscent of the Choose Your Own Adventure books. You get three chances in this. You get to fail three times. And after that, everything goes awful. So, we're going to eat the cap instead. So, when we ate the cap, we nearly threw up, but as we swallowed, we saw our hands start to disappear, and we turned invisible. So we ran past a huge three-headed dog, um, a gross snail-like monster, uh, an axeman who was sleeping in the torture chamber. We grabbed the key hanging on the sewer elf's belt chain. What on earth is sewer elf? Oh, well, anyway, um, yes, the the interesting thing, the issue with the game is uh, it's originally in Russian, I believe, and some of the translations are a bit wonky, but usually you can, you can discern the kind of the point behind the text from the context, or it's just such an obvious kind of issue that it's not hard to discern the true meaning. Personally, I didn't find it to be an issue. Kind of like, kind of broke the immersion in some points. Not a big issue to me. The hero went through the door and quickly locked it behind him. 
In front of him was a long tunnel propped with wooden supports and a signboard which said Uranium Mine. The tunnel diverged, forming three smaller ones. Which tunnel to choose? Left, straight or right? So left, straight or right? I'm going to go with left. It's never the front one in the middle. And it's, it's, it's not this either, I don't think. But on the other hand, we didn't die, so that's good. The tunnel led the adventurer. I have played a little bit of the game, so I have seen some some parts of the game. But um, the the if you avoid making the same choices, of course, at the beginning you kind of have to make one of two choices. Um, but after that, the paths diverge very quickly. So I'll. It has a lot of replay value, which is good because you're going to be dying quite a lot. Um, and, and I think that's a great thing for a little like casual thing like this. The tunnel led the adventurer to a huge cave with massive stalactites. In front of him was a wide dark underground lake with, deep rock, uh, with steep rocky shores. The cave was so peaceful, quiet and beautiful that the hero felt mesmerised with the view. Should he go or walk closer to the water? We're going to approach the lake. Yeah, what's what's the worst that could happen, Frodo? And we have in, indeed died. Uh, apparently, a watcher, watcher of the lake, woke up and enacted some sort of horrifying tentacle scene upon us. And uh, we, we shall blame Frodo for this, because now we have to go into Moria. So, we are not going to approach the lake. And, yes... It is a... Mm -hmm. The hero went round the lake to the other side where he saw a passage leading to another cave. Behind the lake was a ladder leading to a trapdoor. Suddenly, the adventurer saw some tentacles sticking out of the water, and a little further, a huge squid-like monster. The next moment, the tentacles went up and reached for the hero. So we, should we dodge or strike? Um... And now, I feel, might be the moment of death. Um, dodge or strike, dodge or strike. Let's dodge. And we have chosen poorly. The adventurer jumped to the side, dodging the attack, but the tentacles went around the hero, taking a tight grip on him. Having done that, the squid easily dragged the adventurer deep underwater. So here is the scene of our demise. And... We are dead. So now we have the death scene, which shows us the actual scenes opened, the death scenes opened, and our alignment. On the top right you can see the three alignments. You can see, I think, the warrior, the hero, and the coward. So due to the fact that we only had one hero and two, and we had two cowards, we were a coward on this playthrough. Which is okay. So let's just have a quick second go at the thing. Now we know the story, we know what the story is, so we're going to go through the gates this time. So we find ourselves in the castle courtyard, which is in ruins and desolation. Everything is covered with a thick layer of dust, which has zero calories. Anyone? Dust? Anyone? Anyone? Dust? Among the clutter on the floor, the hero noticed a manhole leading into the sewers. We're not going to go the, to the sewers because we've been there. I think I think that's where we found the mushroom. So we're going to go through the door, which seems a lot more interesting. Oh, hello there. Through the oak doors, the hero cautiously slipped into the spacious hall. Armour, weapons hanging on the walls, torn curtains on the windows. It seemed like there was no one there. All of a sudden, a ghost of a naked girl appeared, as you do, before him out of thin air. She floated up to the adventurer, as you do, and said, Hello, I'm the maid. Why did you come to the castle? That made his eyes pop out. Nice ass, he thought. But what should he say to her? Choose, where is the library? What is this castle co Oh, smack her ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, smack that ass. The hero gave the maid a good smack on the arse, as he used to with tavern girls. 
dumbfounded, the maid let out a piercing shriek, so shrill that the hero's eardrums burst and his head exploded. I, I, I'm kind of... I, I knew that it, it, it was going to be a bad, kind of bad choice, but on the other hand, I'm also happy that they included it, that they um, actually let us have the chance to do a stupid thing. So, um, yeah, let, let's go with number two. What is this castle called and who's the owner? This castle belongs to Neo the Fourth, the Chosen One. He spends all his time in the Matrix, full of stolen jewels. He hasn't left the vault with the biggest and most expensive diamond in the world for more than 1500 years. So, it, it, that's a bit of clunky um, text. He asked me not to disturb him. The castle itself is, is throbbing with life. Please, attractive lady, do not say words like throbbing. Well, if you call it life, that is. When the Lord left, the castle was occupied by, the ha by a band of necromancers from the dead slumber. Some of the things to see in the castle are the kitchen, the prison, the torture chamber, the library, the armory, the lord's chambers, the portal cha chamber, and other magnificent examples of the ancient art of castle building. Is there anything else you'd like to know? So, now we can either, again, smack that ass or go to the library, so we're going to go to the library. The adventurer entered a huge library filled with ancient books and scrolls. There must be something worthwhile if you read it, but the hero knew nothing about books and could hardly spell. The library was dead silent. At the end of the hall he saw a door which said Librarian. Should he dwell, delve into the books or go straight to the librarian? Um, let's go through the books. Ow. Oh, shit. We decided to take a closer look at the library and uh, carelessly started going through the books when some of the volumes fell onto the floor with a loud bang. So the librarian came and killed us because we made a lot of noise. Um, let's go for the library and then... Um, hello there, Orc, with the Necronomicon. So when the hero was entering the librarian's office, he accidentally knocked a book down with his sword. Stay where you are, you dumbhead. You're in the, in the library. Keep it down, will you? The orc-like creature howled. Um, so we can either apologize for our mock-up with the book, or we can try to punish the librarian. I'm going to apologize due to the fact that he already killed me once. So, I'm really sorry I didn't mean it, said the hero. Oh, forget it. If you want to survive and don't mind helping me on the way, go to the archives and bring me that old textbook on nu nuclear physics. Okay. I wouldn't go there myself. I'm too afraid of bugs. Um, okay, let's... We'll go look for the book. So, the hero walked to the door leading to the archives. Should he open it or forget it and get out of there? Um... We're going to get on with it. We are a hero after all. So we have come face to face with a lot of small bugs, but also a massive, massive rad roach. So yes, there are roaches. And now, should we chop the roach's legs or head off? Or maybe it's better to scare the roach? No, we're going to cut its head off. See, 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 I told you, nothing bad can come from crushing um, a roach's head with a massive blow of the sword. So the adventurer cut the roach's head in two while beating the bugs up with his other hand using the sword breaker. When the small roaches saw their lead dead, they scattered. As soon as the hero found the book, he heard the librarian's voice behind him. I don't know how to thank you, he said and grabbed the book from the hero's hands. With my magical powers, I can send you to the dining hall or to our garden. Um, let's go to the garden. The hero entered a magnificent large garden enclosed with a glass dome. Many windows were broken, others were too dirty. To the right and to the left of the path were different plants unknown to the adventure. adventurer. Then he noticed some watering cans down the path, and to his right, a, beautif a beautiful withering flower. 
Um, should we flower the wall? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Let's water the. Fl oh God, no. The kind-hearted adventurer took the watering can and watered the withering flower. As soon as it felt the water, the flower raised its petals and suddenly shot a cloud of spores at the hero. So, yeah, we died because we watered a plant. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> indeed. So, um, due to the... Now, on this playthrough, due to the fact that nothing, no virtue or whatever you want to call them, rose above the others, we ended on a neutral note as human. So, that's Swordbreaker, a very nice looking game with very simple, gra well, very simple mechanics, and it's also, well, it's interesting to me because it, it captures the role-playing game kind of feel of doing a pen and paper thing or a tabletop thing. And that's very interesting to me, and hopefully to some of you as well. So if the game interests you at all, it's available on Steam and not very expensive. So if it caught your fancy in the slightest, I do encourage you to look into it. That is it for this time, and I will catch you later.